Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all today to our uh, second in a two-part series. Uh, last week, we did a show that uh, we're kind of following up with today with our guests uh, today, a uh, two-part series basically focusing on a few things. One, uh, film and television percussion recording. Uh, our guests today are, again, uh, uh, experts in this field, have many, many years of experience uh, doing this. And all three uh, virtuoso artists and wonderful Gombops artists who we've worked with for a long, long time and have inspired us to do what we do. So uh, really proud to have all of them here. And I hope you have a good time. This is going to be fun. This is meant to be fun. So uh, you can add your comments when you're watching. Uh, and if we have a chance, we can answer questions. If you have questions, I will uh, see if we can answer some questions and put your question up on the screen. So uh, we would love you to be a part of this too. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a group effort and it takes a village. So uh, have a great time and let's, let's get started. Uh, my first guest has worked with Frank Zappa, Green Day, Josh Groban, My Chemical Romance, just to name a few. MB Gordy's soundtracks include Red Dragon, Transformers, We Are Marshall, Mad Men, The Mentalist, Battlestar Galactica, quite a few. And he is also the recipient of a Grammy Award for his band Opium Moon for Best New Age Album. Uh, everybody say hi to MB Gordy. Hey, MB. Hey, Rich. How you doing, man? Really great. Good. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thank you for doing this. My pleasure. Right on. Uh, our next guest um, is known for uh, bringing very strange and interesting percussion instruments to a session as well as traditional instruments. Uh, he's known for uh, an eclectic approach to things and a very creative percussionist, a uh, wide range of, of instruments that he works on from hand drums to mallet playing to uh, eclectic instruments. Like I said, he's just a very inventive artist. Uh, he's worked with a wide range of people like from Kiss to Willie Nelson to David Benoit. Uh, just a, his, his list is very wide and eclectic. Um, his soundtracks recordings include TV shows like The Family Guy or films like Born Legacy and Cowboys and Aliens and Syriana. Uh, Brad has also produced, composed, and performed on over 30 CDs as a leader. Uh, say hi to Brad Dutes, everybody. Hey, Brad. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me to join MB and Alex. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here, Rich. So great to have you. Um, last but not least, uh, Alex Acuna, his his credits in our industry, of course, uh, they read like a who's who of music. And um, in 1975, he became part of, you know, what is considered to be Weather Report's greatest lineup and their album, Heavy Weather, won them an induction into the Grammy Hall of Fame. He's the recipient of the Emeritus MVP Award from National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, and is a repeated winner of Modern Drummer's Reader's Poll for Best Latin Brazilian Percussionist. And uh, on a personal note, he has inspired me my entire life, my entire career, and um, I've learned so much from him. And um, Alex is also one of these artists that uh, continually is learning and continually expanding, which is so inspiring. So we, uh, we're we really happy to have uh, one of our premier signature artists from Gone Bops. Say hi to Alex Acuna, everybody. Hey. Hey, all right. Hey. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, MD, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, man. welcome. Yeah, man. All right. How's everybody today? Great. Good, hey. good really good. Good, good. Well, it's great to see you all in, uh, in, these, uh, in these times that we're living in. Uh, it's so nice that we have this kind of a thing where we can get together and see each other and, and discuss things that we love, specifically all this music that we get to share together and all these great instruments that we get to play. Um, so everybody, these, these, these three gentlemen, like I said in the introduction, have uh, inspired us for a long time and uh, performed on these instruments, recorded on these instruments. They're experts in the field of, of recording and, and live work. So um, feel free when we're going here, ask questions if you have them, and uh, we'd love to have you as part of this, okay? So um, I guess uh, today, considering all of our challenges, I kind of want to first launch out a question to all of you uh, as to um, your recording situation right now, uh, 
how often do you find yourselves, because you're, you're, you're all three of you are very busy recording artists, uh, of course, with the changes that are happening right now, how, how, how much of your work right now do you see coming back to you within your home studio and, uh, and files being sent to you? And then we'll, we'll discuss exterior studios next, but uh, who would like to take that first question? So, um, okay. so I would say it's, it's, it's definitely not as busy as it was, but um, there's, I have a couple comments about having a home studio in the first place, which I've had now uh, for at least the place that I built at my house um, outside of my garage uh, since 2007. So, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, 2007. So um, first and foremost, and I have to say, I, you know, and I can, I think uh, we all can agree that, that uh, we love recording. I mean, it's, it's, it's in our nature of what we do. However, uh, if you're going to get more deeper, deeper about that, the reason I got into playing music is to play music. I didn't get into music. Just sit and play the tracks in my studio by myself. I mean, I, I, I mean, we do, we all do it because partly because we love it and we have, and now, and we also have to. And now with the whole COVID thing, um, we're sort of forced to. So um, it's, I guess it's the best of both worlds. But again, you know, there's, I have to preface that all by saying like, I, there's nothing like playing people and I want to be in the room with people. I don't want to be in the room by myself. So, end of that story. But, um, but in work, um, it's, it's, I, I, I might be busier a little bit than before. I don't know, but in terms of outside of the studio, there's definitely not as much happening at the moment, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I would I would agree. That's a great point, MB. Really uh, excellent to bring up live. I think we all want to, especially jazz. Uh, we want to play with other musicians. Um, this has been the worst of the, of the last seven months: is not interacting live with other musicians. But however, being positive. Um, with more free time, I've written uh, f four hours of music and put it up on Bandcamp because we do have the time to produce and record our own music in addition to working for other people. So I've tried to look at it as a boost of creativity, uh, the challenge of being alone and more often than not than the past and writing and creating and recording more things and putting it up on the internet. Thank goodness we have the internet so we can communicate and still get our voice heard. So that would be really important to keep recording yourself. Even if there's nobody hiring you, just keep playing yourself. Well, Alex, I know that uh, you've done both uh, in the past six to seven months between bringing work to your studio like you, like you always do and also uh, working in exterior studios. Uh, I've been to your studio and uh, you've done some, you have a wonderful room that has uh, the capability of, uh, of doing pretty much anything that you do, uh, exteriors or as interior, like we all are, are doing, but um, what's your take on, on this right now, as far as uh, <laughs> the, se the last seven months? Excellent, you know, um, I'm gonna give a, a little bit of a, first of all, uh, it, I agree with, uh, I will second what MD and Brad said, you know, about everything they comment is, I second all of that. But um, when I used to do a studio a long time ago, I'm just gonna very briefly say, the guy that actually gave me the idea to build a studio a while ago was Jeff Pocaro. He was doing, and I was doing some session with him playing percussion with Lee Rittenauer and there were some recordings already going. Um, this is wow. This is eighties, <laughs> early, late eighties. It's Alex. You know they want me to record direct from New York, and uh, you know I don't know how they do it with computers. And then the computers are just beginning with the, you know, coming up. And the, anyhow, the 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 story wasn't that really long about it. But when I heard it, I said, "Wait a second! I better start looking into this." So. By the year, year 2000, uh, I built my room and uh, I got, you know, always getting into computers and uh, But I didn't have the time to really sit down behind the screen and, and learning uh, uh, to be a, an engineer because in those days, uh, still you have to kind of 
have big, uh, you know, equipment and stuff like that. It's not like now. It's it, it's um, Pro Tools is easier now. Like even my 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 five seven year old grandkid does Pro Tools, you know. But anyhow, in those days was kind of dif different. And uh, but uh, yeah, doing doing answering your question. I mean, you know, uh, I've been very blessed. First of all, because uh, before they close everything, especially in, your, in Los Angeles, you know, for studios and everything, uh, there were some movies that uh, it had to be finished. Like uh, West Side Story with, uh, you know, David Newman, you know, Steven Spielberg right. movie, and um, Minions 2, you know, and, and, and also uh, uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm sure um, you guys done some uh, Netflix stuff also, you know, they doing right. stuff like that and, and uh, that and they agree for me to well minions agree for me to finish my precaution here in my in my home and um it was great i did two dates finished minions too and uh fun, fantastic but then they called us to finish west side story and we went to fox with some of the precautionists of the la field uh the five guys from L la field timpanis and everything. Dudamel was conducting. Uh, we had uh, Bernie Dressel on drums and um, Michael Valerio on bass and, uh, you know, George and and Luis Conte and I were doing the Latin stuff. And we were out there in Fox, you know, with the mask and, and the, the, there was a nurse and, you know, everything was, we, we had to sign a, a whatever, one of those um, mm -hmm. Disclaimer, things like that. Very, very proper, very, very, very well done, professionally in every way. You know, check everything. Nobody shares instruments. You know, right. everybody had their own thing. Everybody, all mistakes, all mallets, everything. You know, and uh, it went really well. We finished the movie supposed to come. So anyhow, just to say, um, more or less things, a combination of being at home playing and. Uh, and also doing a, immediately when they opened the studios, actually, I should have said this before, uh, the 13th of June, uh, we got some sessions with uh, Luis. Luis, I've been playing a lot with Luis lately. And uh, at Sunset Sound, studio number three, and then we moved to number one and for, for a couple records there. And that was the, the 26th of... Uh, June, I was a little bit, you know, I, I didn't get the green light to really be with other musicians. That was the first thing that, oh, man, I said, well, I pray. <laughs> and my wife did, go with peace. Everything is going to be fine. And Luis called me about 11 p.m. the night before. Alex, look what I found in the Bible. And he sent me the scripture. I said, man, I just saw that scripture on, on TBN, on TV. And he says, you know, I'm protecting you. Don't worry about it. I'll be with you. You know, this is God really affirming that. I said, man, we're definitely going. So we went and, you know, that's, that's mainly how I've been working in my last 40 years of my life, you know, with faith and and just having fun, whatever it comes, and that. But yes, definitely, I would love to play more live stuff, you know, with musicians. And uh, although I play here with everybody on my headphones, you know, play with Jay Waco a lot, play with Vinny Kajura a lot, <laughs> play with, you know, two drummers yeah. on my headphones, things like that, you know, play with Giovanni, play with everybody. So at least I'm playing because when we go to the studio, you also are with headphones. Yeah. And sometimes we are alone in the studio also. Right. So we're doing by yourself and the orchestra or the band or whatever. So all those dynamics about studio, I think you have to kind of take it as they come right now. But it is crucial for sure. It is not easy. You know, there is some things. Uh, man. It is encouraging. You know, you feel a little tipsy there, but it's okay, you know. It's very encouraging to hear you uh, what you said about uh, how how much care they're taking and taking care of you when you come in and making sure everyone's safe and because obviously you know with we're in this for a little while longer 
I just saw something in the news recently because uh, I kind of keep track of releases of film. I love new movies and films. And they basically said that the big blockbusters that were, were all that maybe some of you have played on that are coming out are looking like releases for now delayed for next spring and next summer. So like the Batman and Dune and um, a, a whole bunch of a big list are all looking at postponements now. So it's encouraging to hear that, Alex, because it's uh, it's it, you know because it it, it gives us a, a hope to have work continue, and as long as they're taking care of things and being safe, you know. Yeah. So it's a, it's very it's it's encouraging, you know. It is. It is. The protocol list is pretty deep um, for all these studios, as well as the union. Like I'm doing something on Sunday for a movie that's happening this week at Sony, although we're doing percussion elsewhere, and um, I have to first time for me doing something like this. I have to go get a COVID test tomorrow for oh, really? the session on on um, that's on Sunday. So, um, I you know they're they're you know dotting their eyes. Crossing their T's, man. They're taking care of what they got to take care of. I would say, you know, in terms of like working, and this is hats off to anybody, particular healthcare workers um, who have to wear a mask all day long while they're working. Man, I don't envy anybody who's doing that because it's, you know, we get the luxury on like a little break, maybe sneak in the bathroom, take it off or something, you know, but those people are wearing their masks 10, 12, whatever hours a day for their shifts. And it's not easy, man. I mean, you get dehydrated. You got to be make sure you're drinking. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you got to take you know be uh, take care of while you're doing that. But anyway, but yeah, you know, they have the protocol down. So yeah, you know, um, Brad, I, I wanted to direct something at you. As far as home recording, you've been doing this a long time, uh, and uh, I think I want to ask each of you. Just a little bit about what you use in your home studio. Not, we're not going to talk about the percussion instruments just yet. We're going to get to that, of course. But uh, as far as home studio uh, basic stuff that you're able to make this happen with, um, your DAW, uh, and uh, we'll get into. You know, we don't have to get into a long list of microphones, but kind of your go-to mics that you like to use for hand drums or uh, overhead. You know, it's just what you use in, in recording percussion instruments. So maybe start with Brad on that. Sure. Um, I guess probably one of my favorites is, is an AKG 3000. It, it, it does a whole lot of great overhead stuff. I really like um, um, AKG uh, 451s. I really like Octava 319s. I like uh, it's really great to just go back to the old fashioned um, SM57. So a, a, lo a lot of a lot of experimentation, as, as your guys mentioned last week, too. We, we learn every time we record something and keep trying to be creative as far as different choices. So those are some of the my tables. But starting 30 years ago on half-inch eight-track tape, and then back then we were just recording to tape. And then this is before Internet and emailing tracks, then basically mixing to DAT taking a DAT to a mastering lab. And then it went from uh, eight track digital Sony Tascam 38 or Tascam 38s. And now I'm a digital performer guy. So, you know, 30 years later, there's just a whole lot of microphone choices, but those three or four happen to be some of my go-tos. And then I, I always borrow or experiment with new ones to try to look for a different new sound. Very cool. Um and you mentioned a uh, digital performer and Alex, you said that you, you and your engineer work with pro tools. Yeah. Uh, MB, what, what format do you use? Um, mostly pro tools. Um, we can, I can do, and I have done some sessions with people who really want to work in DP um, and logic as well, but um, I'm most comfortable in pro tools and um, with my engineer, I mean, I I'll do stuff by myself sometimes. Um, I know Brad uh, is in, has has been you know doing stuff on his own forever. Um, I personally, I mean, I do it when I have to, but I'd much rather have an engineer. I have a my room separated, so I have I have a control room. I'm sorry, I'm not in the studio today for them to see, but um, I have a control room. But then I have a tracking room, and so to you know I have to get sounds and jump back and forth, and then run you know remotely from a, a for a, a Pro Tools. You know, like off your iPad or something, you can run Pro Tools. It's great. 
But um, I just don't like wearing the two hats. If it's something I got to really focus on, I'd rather have an engineer. It's way faster. My guy is insane, and he's like editing, you know, stuff if it needs to be. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't do that fast. I know Brad's got his chops down because he's he's editing his own records and stuff. <laughs> and I I'm so slow at that, you know. And I, I to be honest with you, I want to spend as little time in front of a computer as possible. <laughs> yeah. But but so that's my situation. I like Pro. I love Pro Tools. I love the way it sounds. And um. As far as mics, uh, what Brad said, you know, I mean, when I'm micing up my kit, and I, I, I'm not, uh, Alex probably chime in here too, but I like, you know, of course, the SM57, and I have some Yamaha mics that are like SM57s that I really, they don't make them anymore, but I love those. Um, KM140s is overhead. I use 414s as my room mics, but I've got some Neumann, um, uh, what, oh, shoot, uh, for, oh gosh, I forgot the model now, but anyway, it's a smaller, it's not the, it's not, I have an, a 47, but, um, I mean an 80, 87, but um, but it's a smaller mic. That, what's the model? I forget. Anyway, I like those for overheads and rooms. Um, I like Octavas. I like uh, on the, my kick drum. I'll use either a, a Beta 52 or D112 plus a sub kick. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom's 421s. I love those. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's kind of like those are the, the go tos. But I, I also to emphasize what Brad said. If I hear about new mics, um, and mics can, you know, vary in terms of like a cost, obviously some, sure. very, uh, you know, cost effective mics too, super expensive. And so, you know, all of you now that have studios know the, the can of worms, you go like, oh God, what was I thinking? I'm owning a studio. What's the matter with me, man? Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a different journey and I dig it, man. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm not as crazy. Some people, and more so than others, but um, I just like the I just like the whole thing, man. I just like having the variety. It's like, oh, oh, let's try this, man. And if I'm writing my own stuff, which to again to re reiterate what Brad was saying is like, you've had more time now to kind of just what are we doing today? Okay, let's go in the studio, and write. You know, I mean, whatever. So, yeah. Just, you know, I'll share a quick. Uh, very warming, heartwarming story that Lenny Castro shared last week about this, about wearing all these hats. Cause he said, he said years ago, uh, cause he, he and, and Carlos Vega were very close. And, uh, he said, Carlos said something years ago about, you know, having to wear so many hats. I mean, I, he didn't realize how, how fortuitous he was. <laughs> he says, yeah, I think we're, I'm, I'm going to call it, I'm the cat productions because I got to do everything. I'm playing, I'm recording, I'm engineering, I'm producing. But he, I mean, he said this so long ago, but it was just so, you know, so unbelievably fortuitous to, to yeah. today. Um, Alex, uh, so uh, in your studio, I know you have a lot of wonderful microphones. Do you have any like go-tos that you love for recording like congas and, and, and hand percussion? Yeah, actually, um, I'm using uh, the, the telephone king. They 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 say package for of it's called I said the seven pack something like that for drums uh -huh. and I got kind of a double the overheads and I I I was using uh some some of the shoes that I used to own but then I asked them for some tube mics and they recommend me the AR fifty one and I used. I use those two one for uh, for percussion, for everything, stereos and uh, you know whatever whatever is shaking. I mean everything, conga is amazing, amazing, beautiful. I mean the the price is maybe a couple grand, you know, for the two of them. And um, but man, with those two mics, <laughs> you can record anybody and any instrument actually. But also I use it for vocals, you know, my, my daughter and my wife, they sing and uh, when uh, when they want somebody to play flute, you know, and things like that, or, or acoustic guitar or, or, or acoustic piano, I record them in the living room. But very versatile, the AR-51 telephone kit. And that's and definitely, you know, I have the universal audios, yeah. you know, I have, I have the, I used to use the euphonics mixers, but uh, I think now and then you don't even need mixers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really, 
So right. everything is very compact now. It's, it's getting more, more, more modern, you know, and you're getting incredible results sonically, especially, you know. Yeah. I have, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I, I know the answer to this, but I just wanted to field all of you on this. And then after this question, I'm going to throw in a question from the audience that we have. Yeah. So um, when you're asked to do something at home and you get, you're sent the file, you do the part, uh, do you find yourselves basically, uh, and, and are you basically asked just to send a, a wave file, basically no effects, no, no, nothing on it, just basically a good, a good level, and uh, but nothing on it, so they have the room to do what they do, or how often do you add maybe some reverb, or do you not get into any of that stuff and just send them a good clean send, a good clean stem, you know? Yeah, ninety percent of the time, just straight wave file. Uh, and if it's colors, it's, it'll be stereo, right? If right. it's like, if it's a shaker, it'll be mono most of the time. And I love what Bernie mentioned last week: is give people an option. You know, if they ask you for a shaker, man, send them maybe two passes of, of a different shaker or a different mic, or have a room mic included. So, as a freelance person, we really want to help the client as much as possible and if we can offer a little bit more and maybe a little more creativity there hopefully they'll return to us so that's that's a great question but i don't think i've ever had a composer ask for effects they just want oh, just give me the same track you know the straight track mm -hmm. I've, I've had to do it a couple times where they wanted a, a sort of a sub mix and i i hesitate to do that and I hesitated then to do it but it's like I since I worked this, with this particular guy a while I kind of went okay if I do and we put this much reverb in there and then we'll be fine and it was okay but normally I agree Brad and I'm sure Alex should do the same thing it's like flat and dry let them put it the way they need now when I'm playing I like to hear some reverb I like you know for my own purposes but um and yeah. we'll tweak what I'm listening to, but uh, what goes out is flat and dry. <laughs> yeah, you know, I agree with both of you as well. The situation is, uh, and it's great because what you said, MB, you kind of know some of the, your clients per se, what the, do they like? And also these bounces, like um, they send you the the the, the WAPs, you know, the, the files and, and you kind of, Put it in the computer and you listen to them and uh you, you recognize more or less uh, their spectrum what what they really you know how they're working you know how big or how small or how sonically you know what i mean you can you can you can feel it you know even when they send electronic stuff for you to replace them or to play with uh you can you, the music give you the feeling so you kind of have to follow that you know it, it, i kind of follow that okay Ooh, sounds like wow! Sound like uh, the London Symphony. Okay, great. I'm gonna do something about it to try to send in something that we go with them. You know what I mean? So that's that's the way you, you work. And uh, I like to have my engineer because sometimes you have to play jazz on drums. You know, the snares different, different symbol, different sticks. Let me tell you that. Yeah. A different sound. It's a different bass drum. It's a, all together. I say, oh my goodness. So I have sometimes two two drum sets ready to switch you know and i can't be dealing with really changing mics changing sound going back and forth Man, that takes about two three hours really yeah. and, you know to do one song and uh so you kind of it's better to to have somebody that they work with you that knows your lingo understands your musicianship and uh, and everything else and uh you kind of work together and you know and Asking, uh, what do you think? Uh, should we improve this? You know, the tone sounds or changes in it, all that stuff. Yeah. Percussion can be a little easier for us because it's right there. We know the conga sounds, you know. <laughs> we know the bongo sounds. We know the djembe sounds. The drums is, is tricky, especially if you're going to do different styles of drumming, you know. And uh, anyhow, but um, it's all good, man. It's all great. Um, trying to be productive and and play the best and send them the best that you have. Right. Some of them will go, man, Ale, whoa, you know, wow, but wonderful. You know, they praising the stuff. I said, no, man, it's your music made me play like that because you react accordingly too. Yeah, you know, sure. The way you receive, yeah. So anyhow, yeah. it's fine.
So um, we have a question. Uh, this is from Oscar Galileo. And his question is, uh, two questions for everybody. Number one, what have you learned about your playing and yourself during the quarantine pandemic? Uh, number two, how do you stay motivated and creative without being able to perform live or playing with other musicians? Thank you and blessings to everybody. Wow, that's great, great question. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Thank you. I would, for me, I, I, I uh, absolutely, I think all of us learn every day whenever we, uh, as, as detailed or as general as possible, uh, really, one, one thing that's totally motivated me is as a composer, um, what can I write that I haven't written yet and I've had plenty of time to think about it? <laughs> so that's really cool. And, and also with, with uh, things being shut down, lower budgets. So that does cause me to be more of an engineer and producer. Like last week, Lenny mentioned, we are the second engineer, we're the producer, we're the director, we're the, we're the artist, we're the whatever. So, so I just, it's just a great new challenge on our own to, to push creativity. And it's, it's so important uh, when you have a day where you wish, oh, I wish I was doing this or wish I was doing that. No, you just go to your computer, turn it on, maybe pick a click, maybe not. I've done a lot of freeform improvisations, a stereo pair of mics on vibraphone, a stereo pair of mics on marimba, boom, hit record. So what feels in my heart, whatever, it just comes out. And it's really cool to listen back to that because all of a sudden, uh, I, I listen, in, we all listen in a different way, right? When you're recording to somebody's music or following a click, cool and very great uh, artistry, we need to do that. But just turn on your computer, hit record, stereo pair, pick an instrument and do something. That's incredible motivation for me because it usually leads to a new tune. It's really interesting you just said that, Brad, too, because it reminds me of uh, uh, something I've been practicing yoga for for almost 30 years and something one of my yoga teachers said a long time ago was the most important thing is to show up, <laughs> just show up. And that's exactly what you just said. You know, you go into the studio, turn on the computer, show up. And then generally we find that something's going to happen. And, and that's is a great learning experience. Mm -hmm. you know, um, anybody else want to chime in on those questions? Well, um, yeah, so for me, well, a couple things. Um, let me look over here at this question again. So the first part, uh, what are you, <laughs> oh boy, I've learned a lot about myself during this quarantine. <laughs> yeah. I don't necessarily like too much, but, no. <laughs> um, well, they're, they're, they're music related, but Rich, you mentioned something. You said you've been practicing yoga for 30 years. And I mean, I've, I've been on and off for a long time like that, not relentlessly every day for 30 years I wish I had but because of all this I've been working out more I've been able to meditate more I've been able to, to do yoga more and that's not everybody's bag I understand that but I'm, I'm kind of using this time as well as trying to get more practicing done now um, uh, to use it as self-growth you know and just um, in another in another area of my life mentally spiritually um and physically and musically so um so there's that and then how do you stay motivated well i gotta admit uh, and i'll just be honest some days it's tough um and then but other days you know you go like okay it's a new day just what you just said brad rich show up let's go let's get into something Whatever happens, happens, and don't be so judgmental. Because I, I don't know how you, I, I, Alex and Brad. I, I think I know you guys well enough to know. Like, I mean, we can all get really judgmental about ourselves. <laughs> um, and I, I don't. It's it's not. If I've learned nothing else about it at this point in my life, um, it's like you got to lighten up on that, man. It's it's yes. yeah. you yourself up so hard that you end up getting nothing done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 We all know musicians who, who stop themselves by thinking, right? <laughs> Somebody from years ago. Oh, okay. A more terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think, just play. Yeah. Exactly. What, 
I love that free form thing, Brad, that you talked about, because I've, I've done a little bit of that, too. It's like, you know what? Just go, man. Who cares? You're not trying. I don't want to impress anybody, you know, like and, and really at this point for all. I'll just speak for myself. Look, I got no impressing to do. Uh, you know, I just want to play. I want to serve the music and serve um, whatever it is I'm hired to do. Yeah. If I'm, I don't think that's something else. But when I'm when I'm asked to perform either live or recording for someone, it's like, what does that piece of music need? Let's do it. It's not about me at that point. It's not about my ego. Yeah, I mean, it's about all of us bringing what we do to it. Mm -hmm. But it's really what is this? If particularly if you're backing a singer or an instrumentalist, it's not about you anymore, man. It's what do you bring into the table for that artist? Yeah. So and and so this is a good time to be able to like I, I gotta tell you, man. I'm listening to more music now for sure. Yes. Have, than I have been before this. Yeah, the time's there. Yeah. <laughs> there were some days where, like, I'd just be, again, straight up, wasn't feeling too motivated. So, you know what? I just kind of laid around. And I, I particularly love this. Uh, there's this, a radio station in town uh, called KCRW. And I re there's a there's a bunch that we love with public radio. I love K CSUN. And there's a, there's a, a bunch. Um, but I love KCRW, particularly now, because they are playing, all the DJs are great, and they are playing some great music. I don't like every piece of music they play, but there was days I'll just sit there and I go like, oh my God, who is that? Who's listening? And, it, and it's like, wow, I, that's what I used to do when I was a kid, man, is like listen to records over and over and over and over and over all day long. And that's how we studied until we got with, you know, really good teachers. But you're, you're still learning that way, man. If we're not, we're not doing something right. We've got to be listening a lot. Right. And a lot of good music out there, and I really – do kind of don't like i hear it but since we don't see a lot of people anymore i don't hear it so much but when you're see, people will make comments all of in all of our age groups of like oh man music sucks today but i don't like that i'm like i don't know what to tell you bro you're not listening to the right place then <laughs> so much you can always find it right you can always find more you just got to look a little harder maybe you don't like beyonce okay that's fine but we have time to look <laughs> Alex, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this on Oscar's question. So, anyway, so that's yeah. my yeah. well, my take on that is, you know, I, I I'm always kidding with Diana, my wife. Said, Diana, you know, I'm a jazz musician, meaning not really being a jazz musician. I'm improvising all the time. That's what I meant. You know, so but I have a routine. We walk every morning for one hour around the neighborhood. Say hello to everybody now on the streets and safe, beautiful. And then uh, there are times like uh, you don't know what to do. I say, well, you know what? Let's go to the beach. So we go to uh, Oxnar, actually, by uh, Mandalay Beach. Yeah. It's safe over there. It's clean. It's beautiful. The people respectful. Everybody wearing the thing, distancing and everything. Everything is great. And... Uh, that's when I when I when I think that I, I'm going to be bored in the house for a little bit, so I kind of change, you know, uh, the the mood, but and, and especially that because I I have to feel good about it every every day. I mean, because you know it can be devastating just doing one thing or two things, you know, in a day. Music definitely is part of our lives. Um, one thing that I di I discovered a while ago, but even more now is sometimes when you even play or practice the same thing that you practice or play before, you know, the things that you w used to work, new things will come out. Oh, wow. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, wow. Look at this. You know, so it, it, it's not a challenge, but it's really incentive. It gives you a lot, a lot of incentive to, oh, I'm going to go this direction. I'm going to go that direction. Oh, maybe I can do this. I, maybe I can do that with this, you know, discovering many beautiful things that maybe I would like to share with you later. But I also do martial arts every day. That's something I do every day. I've been doing it for seven years nonstop with Dan Inosanto. I do Silat, Kali, and I do a um, little bit of JKD, you know, Bruce Lee stuff. And uh, I love it because I became a martial artist. I'm a, I'm a brown belt with three, uh, <clears throat> you know, lines. And uh, my next one will be the black belts. But I'm not doing this for a black belt. Or I'm not doing 
for that. I'm doing this for my health, to preserve my health, and um, my my especially my memory and uh, my coordinations, you know, and things like that. Uh, so it's very healthy, and I'm teaching some of my grandkids. They already bigger than me now, and. Uh, all, all that stuff is great. I like to read the Bible because I like the Word of God really empowers me. You know, it's so positive. That's the good news, you know. And um, we pray, my wife and I, you know, we're not religious people. we just uh, guided by the Holy Spirit of God. We are spiritual people, you know. And I love to answer everybody who asks any questions on WhatsApp, on, you know, Messenger, uh, you know, whatever they want to know about music. I've been teaching, you know, giving lessons and things like that, and uh, have money, no, no worry about it, you know, because depending on their understanding, when I teach him something, I know that if I gave this guy something, it's going to take him a month to really get it. So, but I display for him, hey, look, use the left foot first, and then left foot and, and left, left hand. And then you know, so I'll do what we call it, the different angles, you know, the different triangles. Feet, doing different things. And anyhow, I have fun sharing uh, the gift. And I never had to pay anybody for a lesson. Well, you guys, most of you know that I, I'm not a... A, a well-trained musician, you know, I I, I, I study enough to understand and read and, and follow, use my ears and my feelings and things like that. Uh, so I'm practicing this book, which is an amazing book for me. <laughs> my challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brett Albright. There you amazing. Go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this in this book you discover that some other guys saying, oh, yeah, you know, five and four, three and seven, and, and this and that, and, you know, that all the combination. And this guy wrote everything. When I, when I knew where he was living in San Jose, I wanted to go and visit him. He died, man. I said, oh, no, because I, I wanted, I had a question for him. I said, see, this in this book, I'm discovering lots of ethnic rhythms. Yeah. It's like a, I discover my rhythm from Peru in this book. The Mexican rhythms, you know, because they are what we call a superimposed rhythms. You know, you, you play in the clave in 4-4, in, in four, four, but you, you play in phrases of 5 and 7, you know. Uh, five eight and five, you know, seven eight and and nine eight. You know, it's amazing. So, those that's what I'm trying to say. It's so beautiful that you're still expanding uh, your 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 knowledge, but also recognizing other things. Like, for example, you find where well, one is at all the time. You know, sometimes you take a solo that is in four four a timbale solo or something. You know, but you can put phrases of five and seven and 16 phrases, you know, we, we'll get back to downbeat again, you know. It's four bars of 16 phrases, something like that. Well, and it's beautiful, man. I, we, I, can, I would like to share this because I get so excited because it's like I discover, I'm discovering America again, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. like, whoa, this is fun. I mean, it, but it's been there. All these people that searching in the, in, in the old times, you know, all the classical musicians, they have all of that, you know. And one recording, I don't know if he, Brad, you were there, or 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 MB. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, John Williams. He was conducting in three to the strings. And he con conducting to the woodwinds, just just them in two. One, two, one, two. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I said, wait a second. He was doing two and three, conducting the two groups of musicians. You know, I said, oh my gosh. So classical music training, all of that is being out there. 
You just have to have the eye to see and the ears to hear constantly. Be very openly. So anybody can reach wherever they want to go musically if you really are aware of what is around us constantly, you know, in your own self, practicing, listening, like MB said, listening a lot of music lately, you know. I'm discovering many great musicians listening, especially gospel music, amazing drummers, amazing singers, keyboard players, bass players, the grooves, the R&B, oh my goodness. You know, they, I discovered a, a timbal play, a timbalero play, the play with um, uh, Mark Anthony, an incredible soloist. His name is Jesse Caraballo. But I didn't know that he was also a gospel drummer. And he plays like, a, you know, R&B, like, a, you know, from the hood. And so I, I, I'm listening to him right now, you know. It's, the guy has the two languages so well done, you know. So that's, that's, that's what I am. I still follow, I'm, I'm a, like you said at the beginning, I'm a student of this beautiful art, you know, and... Um, ending, that's for sure, man. It's, 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 yeah. it, it just doesn't end. It, it's never ending. And uh, I think one of the things that you said to me not too long ago, Alex, we were we were together and you, you mentioned something about, oh, I went back and I listened to whatever recording you did. I had to go back and listen to that again and, and kind of relearn what I played. <laughs> and we were really excited about trying to figure out what you did on this track. And uh, and I, I thought that was that was very inspiring to me because, you know, we've listened to a lot of what you've done. But it's so interesting that you're like, what what did I do? I got to go learn, back and learn that. Because if you have somebody say, well, what did you do on that? You know, you're 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 interested enough to go. I need to figure out what I did. Let me tell you why. You know what happened? And, and all of us know. I mean, the four of us are precautionists and we've been around. You're right. But they, that's. Late 80s, you know, when all those great bands came out, you know, let's say late 70s, actually, they said 70, 70 on and 80s. The Los Angeles was full of, uh, you know, modern music, you know, Chick were playing. I was living here, Harry Henko, everybody moved to Los Angeles. They were living here. They have studios and everything was like, you know, beautiful playing. And Chick called me to play with Paco de Lucia, you know, to play bulerias, you know, a 12 bay bar, there's a long bar, you know, a 12 bay is a very long bar. And inside that bar, you can play three, four, you can play nine, you can play six, you can play, you know, all, many different time signatures inside of one bar. And, uh, and, you know, the way Chick writes. So I had to come up with something to play bulerias, you know, you know that kind of that kind of situation and i don't know how i did it i think i did it, it sounds good you know the the, the the tune but when people ask me ali how do you play that what do you, what do you do Is it, man i have to know really to be able to explain i just reacted like i said before reacted to the music what Paco was playing and Carlos Benavent and what Chick was playing and uh, Alvi Suri was playing the trumpet and all of uh, Don Elias was playing uh, batas, you know, like that. Am amazing, you know, so you kind of re react to the environment of this great musician in that momentum and you come up with something. Uh, but you come up with something that is kind of a, just came out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the one that I say, I had to really check this out. <laughs> what happened here? You know what I mean? That's yeah. exactly well, there, you know, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a, <laughs> this musician gets this gig, right? And the guy goes and he gets asked by whoever's hiring him. He says, hey, so do you read, man? And the guy goes, yeah, well, not enough to hurt my playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's once again, getting back to the same thing, like just try to feel and feel and don't let your, brain and your thoughts get in the way of the playing but again we have to study and study all these different rhythms buleria everything else and they're internalized individually different ways and so then we can i think the whole our whole life right we just are attempting to internalize our feel out so as musicians if if we're successful you can say, oh, that's Alex. Oh, that's MB. Oh, that's Brad. They can hear because we've learned how to externalize the feel within. Maybe. 
Yeah. Well, I want to get I want to get into a little bit about um, obviously uh, the instruments we all play, the Bombops instruments, and uh, I want to start with Brad. Um, uh, Brad, talk a little bit about uh, your 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 choices uh, within the Gombops selection, but and uh, you also are very inspiring as to how you kind of think a little differently on an instrument. Cool. So let's let's talk a little bit about first of all some of the Gombops instruments that you you kind of your go tos, and then. So. The <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the 8-inch Pondero are, is quite smaller than most Ponderos, right? So all of a sudden, um, this instrument makes me think of it as a Rick or, or, or a Tanjiro. Right? So, so even though it's a Pondero... Um, all of a sudden, because of its size, the unique size of it, suggests to me that it could be immediately used as something other than a pandero, right? Uh, the uh, Gonbop's Cajon Bongos. I, I've been going to the Cajon Bongos more often than I go to the Bongos. <laughs> be, be just because all of a sudden it sounds so different, yet it's bongos, yet it isn't. And, and, I was just so thrilled, Rich, um, when I when you when I joined, um, I called Alex and said, "Alex, tell me tell me about your line and your drum." And and of course, you know, a couple of weeks later, I had all Alex's congas thanks to Gone Bops, and and just I probably on every re recently almost everything I'm using. Uh, well, a lot of the recordings I'm using the pod chimes, you know, the pods because it's just so great. It's just doesn't tangle up and it fits in a million different things. Yeah. And then as far as altering things, so they're not used in a traditional way, you know, the metal bucket check Yeah, I've been, I've been yeah. putting uh, marbles inside of it and, and water and, and, and doing <laughs> things to the instruments. So they're coming across. They're great as they are, but trying to look at each drum and see if I can push each drum's potential to someplace else. So once again, I, I, I'm, I'm just motivated creatively uh, all the time. I want to find a new sound. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so uh, for me, uh, I'm using the, the Mariano series. I love Alex's drums. So, but I, uh, it's just for me, for what the sound I was I was going for at the time, and I I just didn't want synthetic heads at the, at that particular time. And I know we can I can get Alex we can get Alex's without him, but um, <clears throat> but the, just for me for that for that sound I wanted to, I wanted to go with the Mariano series, which I really liked. But then uh, when I was doing Josh Groban's gig last year, I also used the uh, uh, well, and then the, the Timbales I was using is, is the Luisito series. Um, so. Uh, but I got straight up. There's, they're all great. So there's not a bad instrument there. So for anybody, uh, you know, listening who is thinking like, Oh, I want to get this or I want to get that. You know what, whatever you get from gum is for my, my money and for my taste, it's all great. It's just at that point, you got to figure out what sound you're going to, you're looking for. So you might want to try a few different of the series uh, to to figure that out. Um, what Brad was talking about with that uh, with the with the bucket check that I have, that thing, awesome. Uh, I mean, that's just a great instrument. And 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 I have to agree with I'm like Brad in that sense of like, what's this? What's this new weird? What can we do with that? You know, like you know, and getting and experimenting with sounds and just getting crazy. I mean, Brad and I, you know, go back to like you know, my Cal Arts days with this percussion trio that I had, the Antenna Repairman. And um, and then in his, I forgot your group at the time, uh, Brad. But, Motoration uh, Quartet. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And we did a, a concert together. It was hilarious. Yeah, a concert with nobody showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Great. The Antenna Repairman, a percussion trio, and the Obliteration Quartet, my quartet. And we were those audience. <laughs> yes. They played for us and we played for them because we've both done a lot on the avant-garde new music thing. But hey, it was a, a memorable experience. <laughs> but the 
because of that, you know, because of our backgrounds, I went to Cal Arts for my master's. Um, I that's I played a lot of twenty, well now twenty first century music, but then twentieth century music. Yeah. And, um, and it's just everything was about sounds. And if you think about it, um, all the and this is what I like about the Gombak series as well, that which it complements what we do in in all of our recording, but film and TV. Um, let's go back. You know, it's there's this whole experimental part to it. When, when you go way back to Jerry Goldsmith days when he was doing uh, Mission, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, Planet of the Apes, and that was Amy Richards, who was the sort of godfather of all this in Los Angeles, anyway, and owning all these instruments from all over the world. Um, you know, he was playing buckets and you know mixing bowls and pots and pans and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And, and it's like, that's what John Cage and those guys were doing. So Amel was taking that, putting that in this world. And then all of a sudden, all these film components, TV was like, whoa, what the heck? You know, like, whoa, I got, yeah, let's use that. And, and at the end of the day, it's yeah. what sound works for what it is you're doing. It's not about really, you're playing like some, I don't know, something that where you're playing, you know, say African Dunans and djembe and some congas and then tabla. I mean, tabla has nothing to do in that part of the world, but that doesn't mean anything because now everything's a hybrid. And does that sound work for what the composer needs to do? Or well, if we're writing our own music, that's a different thing, but for what the composer is looking for in that particular scene, in that particular movie. It doesn't, you know, we use, we have all played, done tons of sessions where it was like taikos all over the place. Well, yeah. that's the Japanese music, man. Yeah. But taiko is the sound that they wanted for this big, just boom, boom sound. And it's like, that's how you're going to get it. Concert bass drums are great, but that's not the only thing that helps the impact. So taikos then took that over, you know, now. Of course, we're talking samples in this day and Asian as well. But now you can layer all that stuff together. When I did Battlestar Galactic all these years, it was like there was me triple tracked live as well as me sample. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there were so many layers. When you hear that stuff, go back and listen to Battlestar Galactic, you'll be like, well, I mean, I'm even impressed still to this day because early days of that was recorded in my garage, not in my current studio and <laughs> like, how did they get that to sound like that that's me oh my lord so you know i mean it, it's just it's what serves the and this is again back to the, the gong bop instruments they all like hey you know like you're going to tune the congas one way if you're playing a alex you know and brad you guys know better than anybody particular type of music you're going to tune it a particular way but what about oh well, what let's get weird here I don't want to do a traditional tuning. I'm going to tune stuff like way down and just get them kind of floppy sounding or something for because it creates a different thing. It's a different sound. Yes. And these instruments are versatile that way. Um, so, and then the, your, the, the, all the cajones, I have Alex's gone. I mean, it's like, oh my word. They're just, it's just every instrument is great. So anyway, I'm going on about all that, but just to get back to the comment, which was anybody, who is looking for, you know, and you're not sure what instrument you want. Well, then obviously you got to think about your price range and then what sound works within what you can afford. And Gumbops has it all, man. So I, I can't say enough great things about these instruments ever since. And I, I remember I was at a, Rich and I talked for a while about me coming with you guys. And then I was at a session. I think Alex, I don't remember if it was, we did Moana or it was something before that. I don't remember now. And I was like, yeah, Rich and I are talking about it, but it hasn't happened yet. And, and you go, I'm going to call Rich. Tell him to sign you right now. Like, <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. I remember. That was when we were doing Moana. I think that was one on Moana. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And, and the other day, man, I was thinking about you, too. Uh, and Brad, because Brad, you mentioned we did uh, the Born uh, Supremacy, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And with with uh, MB, I th we did a uh, what is it? Uh, Mulan, right? Mulan, yeah. Mulan, yeah. It, it, it beautiful. I have. I bought it. I bought it. I I I look, I look at the 
I see it on my, my TV. The sound of the taiko drums. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo! And they really, because we were just doing taiko, remember that night? <laughs> Yeah. And they, man, it's so wonderful, and the movie is amazing. You, you, what, check it out, anyhow. Yeah. But I was playing Gongar since 1964, so it's about 56 years ago. My first time I played Gombaps. Actually, it was the first time I played a, a, an instrument that was well made. Uh, because uh, LP or other whatever companies, they didn't start until 10 years later. Mm -hmm. So, Gombaps, I came here to Los Angeles and I'm playing with Yanni uh, Martinez and uh, some uh, Puerto Ricans and, uh, and Mexican players over here. I, I met them, everybody, and, and everybody was playing Gombaps because uh, you had to kind of give an advance to the Bobadilla family, so they can buy the lumber and you know all, all, all the uh, what, what they needed. It needed to be done. The instrument, you know, you, you give them money first, and then they made it. Maybe three months later, you will get your couple congas, you know, something like that. So, and then uh, I left to Puerto Rico, came back, and I started playing with the report 1975. And there is a video uh, with. Weather report that I'm playing percussion, Chester Thompson is playing drums, and uh, Alfonso Johnson is playing bass. We did it in a Berlin Jazz Festival at the Philharmonic in 1975. And that was my second, maybe, uh, or third concert that I played with them. Amazing music, amazing players, and uh, my gombaps, you know, were there too. So then, of course, uh, I left. Uh, Something happened, you know, I met the guy that invented and created the LP instruments in New York, Martin Cohen, and uh, he came to Puerto Rico to talk to me. And uh, because the band that I was playing in Puerto Rico, he um, he saw the Pandeiro, he saw the Afushe, you know, which is the, the, the cabaza, you know, and uh, he made one. And the Brazilian percussionist that I was playing in the band in San Juan, Puerto Rico, he didn't like it. So he he threw the afushe and I flew like a like a soccer goalie. Oh, I got it. You know, I said, this is mine. And uh, and that's when he was beginning to make, uh, he told me, making uh, bongos and congas and timbales in New York. This is 19... Uh, 66, when I met him, he was already making. Uh, so he said, Alex, you know, when you come to the States, uh, I want to, you know, I want you to play my instruments. I said, sure, of course, you know, because I forgot all about gombaps, because uh, gombaps was very tough to get any gombaps from California to Puerto Rico. Anyhow, it was easier from New York to Puerto Rico. It's right there. So that's why I, I switched. I went to another companies and things like that. But then when uh, DW got Gombaps, Don Lombardi, we saw each other in one of the modern modern drummers, yeah, in New Jersey. When I played with uh, Raul Reco, Carl, per Carl Perazzo, and Sheila E, we did a kind of a concert, a show for whatever modern drummer concert, you know, percussion stuff. And Don Lombardi was there. He said, Alex, I want you. I said, okay, you know, I talked to you Monday and blah, blah, blah. So we arranged everything. My son, Javier, maybe you guys know. He said, Dad, let me talk to him. What do you really want? I said, I want de, 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 de. the main thing I mentioned, I said, I want the cajon to be made in Peru. Now, the guy that started making the, making the cajon in Peru got killed. He, he was assassinated. Wow. But uh, yeah, on uh, last November the 23rd. Wow. Yes. Um, because whatever, he started making money, you know, and start, uh, still living in, in a very poor area, very dangerous area. So anyhow, Alexis got, uh, got killed. And uh, but uh, what I what I what I knew about Alexis because I saw him growing, you know, 
that he, all of a sudden, he began with his father, and then five years later, he has 35 workers in his place, you know, in his factory, making cajons and everything else. And that really touched me because I said, man, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. 35 families in my country are eating right now. They have a job. That's good. That's that's what I applaud the cajon from Peru, you know, because that's what it represented to me. Everybody's making cajon now all over the world, you know. And still, the way we made the, the Peruvian one, uh, that Gombabs is so honored to have, is I am very honored to, to be part of it because it's made with the Peruvian wood from the Amazon, and is Peru really knows how to make the cajon, you know, and uh, and, and all of that. Not the flamenco cajon so, so well yet, and I said that the truth is good, it's good enough, but uh, you know, that this Spain is making really good flamenco cajons, and I have I have one. That, uh, that piranha, piranha place, very good. But everything else is really excellent. Yeah, the, especially the, the, the metal claves, man, the oh. metal claves, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing. I sometimes, you know, you have to play the claves and you have to hit the cowbell and stuff like that and, and just hit it with, because you know that it's not going to damage anything. Yeah. But uh, what you guys were talking is before is about when you're in a session it's, it's about the timbers sometimes you have to use plastic sometimes you have to use wood sometimes you have to use metal sometimes you have to you know apply all that stuff you have not everything has to be played with play with sticks you can play with rods can play with brushes you know it's it's about yeah. it's so wonderful to to be part of doing moving soundtracks as a session session player, because you start discerning and understanding about timbers, yeah. what, what, how do they fit this part of the music? It's part of the yeah, you know, or the the composition and things like that. You really develop an incredible, you know, mind open about use different kind of. Uh, uh, on instruments and gombabs is making amazing. everything that is being made by gombab is because everybody's involved trying it and uh you know so it's well made it's made by all of us it's made by the you know all the players and and definitely the makers but uh i'm very happy with um, everybody that is on gombabs you know and um, they're all my brothers i mean i know them all i've been playing with them for, for a long time with them so very, very honored to be part of it, and uh, all the ones also the, in Europe and and in South America, in Peru and uh, Argentina, fantastic players. You know the what is the name of the the guy from uh, Israel? Oh, you know, I just spoke with him yesterday. Itamar, Itamar Duari. He says, oh. hello. and um, I just 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 spoke with him yesterday, and. Um, He's going to be working on a video for for us that's going to incorporate uh, the instruments that he has from us and a Doombeck and, and um, Brad and MB and everyone out there. Uh, look up Itamar Dawari from Israel, and I just actually recently posted a video of him on our Facebook page performing. And Alex, you're the one that turned me on to him. Amazing, and, uh, he's amazing. Yeah, he played with a uh, coin. Uh, Abishai Cohen, the bass yeah. player. Right. So if you find an amazing, humble, oh my goodness, what a musician. Yeah. He does everything. E everything you want to see in a, <laughs> in a percussion, he, he has it. Thank His you. right symbol is like Tony Williams. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the cajon player, the doombeck, whatever. But he's so humble. And that's, a, you know, the guy is so simple. I mean, you know, yeah. every time he come over here, he calls, Alex, I'm here, let's get together. You know, all that is amazing. Well, everybody's like that, you know. All the great musicians, Luisito, everybody, they're all great. great we people. hope, we hope yeah. one day to uh, possibly, maybe one day we can develop a Darbuka with him or a, a doombeck with him. Which would be really exciting. He's an outstanding Darbuka player, probably one of the best in the world. Um, I just have a comment from a 
uh, a guest here, or, or one of our customers here says, I love my specialization model Cajon. I've had many compliments on it, the real deal. So, and it, you know, the, the Cajons like that are made in Peru and Alex's special edition, they, they are really like pieces of furniture. They're just gorgeous, beautifully Indeed. wood inlay and sound amazing. And, um, and so, you know, uh, uh, I wanted to get back. We we're, we're getting a little bit on on the time here, but I just wanted to ask you guys something going back to recording specifically for film and television, because I've experienced this in my, in my uh, times that I've been attending sessions with people uh, and watching what you do. Like I've been fortunate to attend some film sessions with Emil Richards and Joe Picaro over the years. And I wanted to ask your opinion on when you're handed a part, you know what I mean? The thing about what you do, the three of you uh, in this arena is regards to reading and the ability to read and the ability to sight read specifically. Uh, there's there's a very select few of you in the world that do this, uh, that are in this small circle that that um, play on all of the music that we hear and watch, you know? So uh, with regards to reading, how often have you found yourself when you get a part, have, has this happened to you, I should say, where it's maybe it's the composer's not a percussionist and you've looked at it and gone this is almost unplayable and if you had to make adjustments to the part or maybe leave out a few nights on leave out a few notes on a male part so you can execute it within the time frame of the of the cue so i just find that really interesting and i'm wondering if you guys have run across that anybody can take this yeah i i think we i bet you all three of us have done a lot of editing of because composers, they know about everything, but we, uh, percussionists are orchestrators because we know about hundreds of instruments. So if somebody writes a crotali part with 30 second notes everywhere, it's just going to come out like a mess. So you're going to start editing to pull the part <laughs> off. I mean, there's, I, I'd say dozens of times where you, you have to edit a, uh, Alex and I were doing Beverly Hills Chihuahua. <laughs> and, and there was a part, we had our great friend Mike Fisher with us and, and the composer just wanted a rhythm and either Alex or Mike said, let's do three cajones. And he's literally got just slashes written, but we all have to read and play within the slashes and, and stop and start in the right place. So reading is super important. Yes. He hadn't written a, a cajon trio part, but because of Alex and me and Mike Fisher, we were able to make a Cajon Trio happen in Beverly Hills, Chihuahua. That's so, right. So absolutely, uh, I m most of the time, <laughs> to some degree, unless it's super orchestral and, and it's just really like, like you say, John Williams or somebody who knows everything already. <laughs> it's like there's, there's, there's all level of composers, the guy who writes slashes and the guy who writes every single little detail. So you have to... Uh, be able to play every detail and and edit or play every detail or with slashes creativity comes in there you get you get uh to reiterate what brad was saying you, you we see we see everything from like I, I say the sublime to the ridiculous maybe though depends on what you think sublime is and what ridiculous is but so one side of the coin would be here's every you show up here's everything written out sometimes it can be really difficult um, but that's what you have to play to the other extreme of like, there is nothing written out. And I'll give you an example of that. When I did American sniper, um, uh, it was, it was, it was myself and three other percussionists. That was the score in the orchestra for that movie, except Clint East went on piano and there was literally no music. In it. So <laughs> where do you go with that? Yeah. yeah, because it's like, I'm not the composer, so yeah. but that's, that's tricky. It, it's good. <laughs> you know, right now, but we made it happen, and I gotta say, it was pretty impressive. And he didn't even want to even use a click, and I at least was able to talk him into that. Yeah, oh, Alex, it was it was crazy, and I'm going like, okay, could we try this? And if you don't like it, well, okay, we'll try something else. But and it worked, and then we, but he'd sit and go like, okay, sit, play there. And then he's kind of sculpting it. We're watching the scene and he's sculpting it. And we're making our own charts and it was crazy. That's to me, the ridiculous. 
the sublime, the sublime, even though it might be a, you know, it's not so sublime if you're talking about the way, you know, some something that John Williams could write. I've seen some of his stuff, man, and I've had the opportunity to work with, him, I think, once, twice. Um, but uh, oh my gosh, I saw the mallet. I didn't play on AI, but I saw the mallet parts for that. Oh my lord, those were insane. <laughs> and, I, and I know all the guys involved in that, and I know they all did not sight read that. They had they had at, at home to look at. Now that said, we all have the luxury now. I mean, we all get session. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Links to the music, so we all get to look at it in advance. Not every session, but a lot, most, most. And um, I can only speak for myself. I'm going to take advantage of that, man. Just in case there's something that you get and you go like, woo, okay, that's, that's yeah. a, that might, but I need to work on that vibe part tonight. So, you know what I mean? Or something. But generally, it's, you know, where you show up, you play, and you play the parts. And, and then you get, like Brad said, you get some, there's improvisational, particularly as rhythm section players, we get a little more improvisational elements. But I remember I was doing this movie. It was the first time I actually worked with Alex. And it was a John Debney movie. Yes. And and I'm like freaking. I'm going like, oh my gosh, I'm playing with Alex Acuna. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like I was like so. So anyway, we're playing and we start. And he wrote this thing in seven. And it was tricky. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, what? How would it? And he goes, MB, you play this. You do this better. <laughs> <laughs> Anything better than him? So it was good, but it was beautiful because, see, that's the thing. We all know what our strength and weaknesses is. Exactly. Going back to what I said earlier about ego, man, dude, I'm sorry. We can all throw our egos around if we want to, but I'm telling you, it's not going to get you anywhere. No. And it's it, and I'm too, I, I'll, again, speak for myself, I'm too old for that, dude, because there's plenty of people who got bigger egos than me and can throw it around, and I'm just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But um, it's about the music, man. And so, like, you know what your strengths and weaknesses are. So when we're all in a section together, if it was the three of us right now, I know what I know. Brad's mallet playing, and I'm going to go, Brad, dude, you got that. Now maybe there's something else in there. I'll go like, okay, I can I can hang with that. But I I know Brad. Like, particularly if there's a jazz a vibe part, I'm going to give it to Brad. I'm not going to. I don't want to do that. I mean, I can do it, but I don't. I won't be happy. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just make it really well. Okay. <laughs> okay, this might be getting a little extreme, but when I do these seminars for like the USC, I do a bunch of different seminars for different schools like USC and Berkeley, and now I just did one for Eastman and Northridge and whatever. And I tell these composers, it's for the film scoring program. Program thing. And so I tell these composers, I'd look, you've got to, uh, here's some, here's a basic principle of how you need to even though you all might not be percussionists you need to allow pretend that you're playing the bass drum and then okay i gotta put that bass drum beater down to go i need time to get change mallets or just get to my hands to do something particularly if you're writing a through composed part and then we talk about notation and then we talk about how to lay the parts out all that and the most important thing is if you can't read it this i'm saying this to anybody listening if they're composers if you write something and you cannot play it, don't expect us to be able to play it. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at it. Does it make sense? Have you beamed a bunch of beats together or are you isolating per quarter note, whether it's four sixteenths or combination thereof, right. you know, like that? Make it so you're not writing it. Listen, on sessions, you're not writing. You're, this is not concerto time, right? You want all the musicians to come in. So here's my point about this. I make this joke. I go, you guys can slap me around for this later, but I go like, musicians are like lap dogs. We just want to show up, lick you, and go like, hey, we're, we're in coach. Let's go. Let's go. Like, I want to do that. And we want to play. We want to play great. We want to get paid and go home. Now, we want to, but we, but we take it seriously. It's not like, you know, uh, you know, so I, I mean, I, I've seen it through a lot with a lot of musicians and I've been in this experience too, where like you show up and something's it's listen, if somebody writes something and they wrote it and I can't play it, but it's playable. Okay. That's on me. But if they wrote something and I don't know anybody who can play it, <laughs> it's on them. And either way, 
that happens. Live sessions or sometimes live gigs too, but not not very often. But it has happened where I've left and I'm going like, oh my lord, I suck today, man. God, I got what's going on? I can't. You know, I don't know if you guys have had that experience, but uh, and it's like, and we take what we do seriously. So we need your help as composers, as to go like, how can you facilitate us showing up and you getting the best product that you want and need and and are paying for? Yeah. 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 So so anyway. Um, <laughs> well, we're we're um. I could talk to you three all day. <laughs> I know, man. There's so much more we could cover. But we we're getting to the end uh, of, of the show. But uh, I just wanted to say, uh, all of you out there that are watching, if you have questions for these gentlemen, um, by all means, uh, send us a note. We're happy to pass it on. Or you can, I'm sure, find them on their, on their pages. And uh, as you can see, they're very willing to share ideas. And it, that's what this is all about uh, in music. And, and I also find in percussion specifically, it's a village of of a lot of sharing and we love sharing with each other. So um, did you guys have anything else you wanted to, to uh, uh, state before we, we end the, the show today? And uh, again, thank you so much for, for being I, a part of this. No, thanks. It's just uh, really worth very thankful for you to setting it up and Alex and MB and last week was great too. I just, if people want to hear us or hear music, I'd love to tell them where to go if that's possible. I mean, sure. If you put Brad Dutz, D-U-T-Z, dot Bandcamp, there's 35 of my records there. And I, I have to, this is, Bandcamp is a great site for all artists to go and put up what you have right now, load up a WAV file, and you can hear it. Another one last week, um, a friend of mine, Chris Wabish, we put a new duo page, Dutz Wabish Duo, and Alex is one of our guests, special guests on that recording, and so is Emil Richards. So check out Bandcamp if you want to hear a lot of self-produced, really creative music. Okay, cool. And MB, what do you have coming up? Um, well, let's see. The, the, the band that, I, that I'm in, Opium Moon, where we've done a new record. Um, the current stuff that we've done, you can see it on opiummoon.com. Uh, you can, of course, go to Spotify. Um, and this new record is going to be slowly released one tune at a time over, I think once a month or once, whatever we decide. And, and then we'll do the official full record release next year. But then I'm also in a, in a, um, a total improv band. And I mean, we don't rehearse and we don't write, we show up and we play. I love it. And this is getting back to what Brad was saying earlier. So it's called chaos, K A O S Z theory. So there's a website. There's uh, Spotify stuff, um, and it's so much fun. And, and now the people in the band, particularly the one guy, Carl Vincent, who, who's kind of the director of this thing, even though he doesn't like to consider himself that. But um, he, there's some videos now being done, and it's just it's just really fun. So what we do, anytime we play live or in the studio, we record everything. And then he goes in and kind of does these edits and creates these pieces, and then now we found some people to do uh, videos for So that's kind of fun. And um, other than that, it's, you know, it's different movies and different records I'm playing on, but, you yeah. know, people can find that stuff. So. Okay. And Alex? Yeah, you know, um, I, I have I have an offer to do uh, a solo album again. I kind of said, I'm, I'm done, kind of, <laughs> because, you know, I want to take more time to be with the, with the family and stuff. But uh, anyhow, it's a, it's a company, the, the name of the company is, Lecoq is L E C O Q. It's a French El, El Gallo, you know, the, the, the r r roster, rooster, no? El yeah. Gallo. And it's from Las Vegas. The guy was, they record like three, four records a month, you know, and he was using uh, Capitol and even flew Paratucci from New York and Venice and most of them. And uh, Marvin Smith is in some others, you know, I'm playing all the percussions and re really, really great big bands, all, all different, different stuff. Sometimes he records two drummers and, and me in the middle with, you know, it's beautiful. It's, it's a, and, and say, Alex, you know, I want you to do a record, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I was supposed to do it this month, but uh, the musicians that I want, they don't want to really go to the studio because they film everything. By the way, you know, Almost everybody now, especially now, 
when you do a race, when you do anything in your house, they want they want a video also. Sure. <laughs> you know, everybody said you have to record now. You have to do a video at the same time. And uh, so I think we waiting for January maybe, but because I want Abraham, you know, and Paratucci. Some of the tunes Abraham, some of the Paratucci on the bass, and uh, some I want uh, down Grusin because I love the way he his harmony and the way he plays and we compose some song together beautifully and definitely uh maybe uh John Beasley will be the, the, the other piano for the other songs and stuff like that but uh, it's a great company so maybe January when everything is a little more we'll see we'll see after Christmas how we feel with you know with the whole situation so it's about that mainly waiting for to be more relaxed and to be sure and to be secure and all of that, you know. But there are opportunities there, which I'm saying in general, may, mainly because people are still, you know, opening companies, recording, making studios, and, and it's a combination of situation because music, you know, situation like a studio, musician, recordings, and music is the only thing we really have and and we need to continue to project and keep doing it and playing and and teaching studying practicing and writing and all of that you know so i think it's a great place for us to be in the midst of this situation so i will tell everybody to don't give up and like uh <laughs> and be say, put your ego away <laughs> Let the music flow. Yeah, that's too short. Let's now. Do that, man. Let's continue to do that. Well, guys, I can't thank you enough of uh, not only for for this fantastic conversation today, but for being a part of the Gone Bops family. I, I you know how much it means to us, and and moving forward, we're going to continue to create new and fun things, and uh, and expand our offering. And uh, and um, Thanks to you guys and your expertise, you're always opening our eyes and our ears and our minds. So, but right. thank you. And um, uh, hang tight for a minute, guys. I'll be right back with you. I'm just gonna say goodbye to everybody, and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be right with you. So, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Again. Thank you. So, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I hope you had fun, and and I think we all learned something with these things. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of them. So, stay tuned to uh, our social media and YouTube channels and um, we'll be announcing the next show soon. Uh, again, any questions, anything you'd like to know, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We will answer you on in, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, any of the means that you have. And uh, thank you again. And we will see you all very soon. Have a great day.